Welcome back, Stas23 here, and today's night therapy is the Kaiser Vanguard Hiccup. This is an Azo design, coming in at $82, and it comes in these, these two variations, both of them micarta. You have a front flipper and a regular flipper, green micarta and black paper micarta on the bottom. We're going to remove this one and mainly talk about this one because this is the one I tested. You have a nice spear point blade with a satin finish. 154 cm stainless steel which is an excellent mid-tier steel uh takes a great edge and is uh nice and slicey in this one right here you have a high saber grind that comes down to a decently thin edge to around 16 to 18 thousandths behind the edge you have a long usable row of fine jimping there nicely done by kaiser you have a sharpening trowel that will give you sharpening life before it starts to widen up in the back you have a decently thin tip for doing tip work, piercing, uh, boring a hole, whatever you want to use it for. And uh, came nice and sharp from factory. Let's test out that sharpness. We get started with the cardboard. The knife came with a nice sharp edge from Kaiser. It's performing outstanding. Uh, I love spear point blades for the, <laughs> this reason. You get a good bit of straight edge to it before it goes into that belly to the tip. So this was nice and comfortable, relaxed. I cut a little bit more cardboard than I usually do just because it was so easy. And I checked the edge after I was done with all the cardboard and the edge was still good. One reason why I love 154CM, it's a good performer. It's still pretty tough and it's easy to strop back uh, after you do start to doll it out. So once you use, once you use it, strop it, and I think you keep that edge for a good uh, amount of time. Now we get started with the Pine 2x4 to test the ergonomics and how well that edge is still biting. That edge was doing very, very well. It was biting into the wood really quickly. I was able to make very fine curls and get into it pretty deep as well. I did notice, however, whenever I got uh, into the more power cuts that the positioning of that pocket clip being so low was uh, causing a hot spot for me. It wasn't terrible, but it was definitely noticeable and something to note. One thing that I did find that helped me out a little bit is whenever it started to, uh, that pocket clip started to bite in my hand, swap over to the uh, saber grip. I think you'll see me, I think toward the end I'd do it. And look, there you go right there. And that was helping alleviate the pressure that that pocket clip was putting on me. When we got to this portion of the testing, notice the edge was still nice and sharp it was getting through the materials very very easily without much effort it did struggle with this thick leather a little bit uh, it may be a little thicker toward that tip I took two times to get through it but uh, it got through it uh, this knife definitely excelled at your slicing task um, it was it was very comfortable to use doing the slicing task because I wasn't having to exert that much energy and uh, felt like the edge remained sharp all the way to the end till we get to the sisal rope. Uh, it did really good on the rubber. Some knives that have thicker edge bevels struggle through that uh, different sizes of the rubber and that can really put a, a strain on an apex of an edge is that rubber. Um, you cut enough of it and it'll definitely show. It was blasting through this corner cardboard right here. It's just getting rocky, just trying to hold it like that. But edge still going excellent. And right here, you can see that it still has a decent bit of bite because it's just ripping through this denim, no problem. It always puts a smile on my face when I get to this point into the sisal rope cutting where I'm able to do push cuts. The edge isn't sliding off that sisal rope like a lot, of, a lot of them do. It has enough bite and it's doing a good job. I uh, could still feel the edge popping through this nicely. It's got enough belly up there in the front to where I could comfortably do these pinch cuts onto the flat surface right there. One thing that I was kind of worried about is when I was doing those pinch cuts, being this is a button lock, I was afraid that I was going to grab a hold of that button lock and disengage it. 
Not that it would have closed on me since I'm cutting down, but something I was worried about. However, I grab it in front of that, so I had no problems. I made 43 cuts, and I think it did great. Now, this is why I love 154CM. Right here, we're gonna show the edge after all that cutting. It's got a few, let's say about, yeah, three hang-ups in that edge. Um, didn't feel like anything terrible, but we're gonna strop it up. This is one micron uh, gunny juice right here on um, leather. And I don't know how many passes I did, but do a few passes on this and then I flip it over to some blank kangaroo leather. Um, do a few more passes here and the results I think are pretty darn good. Um, the knife was back to hair shaving sharp and I'm going to show you the edge right here coming up. Now let's close it up and check out the deployment. Um, you have dual deployments on both knives. This one's a front flipper with the rounded over uh, front flipper tab right there. Nice fine jimping so it catches that thumb nicely. Works very good. The drop shut on this one is very, very smooth. You can reverse flick it because of that reverse, uh, I mean, of that blade hole. And you can easily get to it uh, left handed as well. Uh, you can actuate that button left-handed, and you can also front flip it left-handed. With the flipper, uh, the flipping action on it's really nice. This one came out of box, a little smoother than that one. That one broke in nicely, though. But as you can see, this one's extremely smooth. I did add the thumb stud to this one. It comes with a thumb stud with both of them. Uh, however, I'll tell you right now, I, I don't like the thumb stud. I'm going to remove it. I just had it on there for the video. This particular one has a little notch for it. This one doesn't, so I don't know how well it would work on this one, but they did include it anyway. Um, the flipper on this one is nice and snappy, good drop shut. You can use that thumb stud if you like. Uh, I just prefer blade hole, and it's very easy to manipulate. One thing that I did notice is, is trying to use it left-handed whenever I was trying to reverse flick it. Uh, you can see right here my finger is sitting on that uh, lock that lock button So a few times whenever I flipped it, it it almost disengaged that lock something to be aware of now You can situate your fingers to where you don't do that if I can my this is not my dominant hand But it can be done Now let's take a look at these scales you have green linen micarta on this one that has that nice fuzzy texture to it. I think it feels nice. Um, it's nice and grippy and soft in the hand. I love linen micarta, at least the way it feels. It will darken over time. You can see the darkened spots. It was a lot lighter when I first got it. Uh, you have a nice little cutout area to get to that thumb hole very easily. Um, no problem, definitely a fidgety knife. You have uh, all blacked out hardware and a blacked out button. I like that texture on the button. It's kind of like a meat ten tenderizer right there. Uh, gives you some extra grip, even though I don't think it's really needed. Um, it is nice, you know, if you're not pay if you're not looking, you can know that you're on that button because you can feel it. Uh, it is nice and recessed, so you're not going to disengage it um, if you don't want to. The scales on this one, like I said earlier, these are paper micarta. They look nice. Um, they have like this, I don't know what it is in there. Sorry if I can hear the lightning, it's storming here. Uh, they feel nice, they're nice, they're smooth, kind of slick. Um, I, they don't give you as much traction as the linen, but they still give you some traction being that they are micarta. Uh, the hardware on this one is T8 for the pivot, and unfortunately we have T6 on the body screws and the clip screws. I would have much rather see T8 all the way around. Uh, the scales are shadow box to the frame, just meaning that the stainless steel frame uh, sits out a little bit wider than the actual micarta. Um, the the line the stainless steel liners are rounded over right here so they're nice and comfortable i did not feel them when i was squeezing down on the knife into that uh, two by four so it still remained nice and comfortable the inside of the stainless steel liners are skeletonized heavily on the top right there you can see and on the bottom uh, they did everything they could to keep the weight down let's check out the weight on the knife all right we'll check the front flipper first you're at 3.2 ounces. I think that is a re definitely reasonable there. And then the flipper, let's see, is it the same? Actually, the flipper is a little bit lighter, which is odd because it has the uh, 
the thumb stud on it. So maybe the handle material is a little bit lighter. Now let's take a look at the pocket clip. You have a deep carry pocket clip that is tip up left or right handed carry. Let's check it out in the pocket. It goes in the pocket nicely. One thing nice about the front flippers, it sits nice on the side and you don't have anything sticking out for whenever you put your hand in there. Um, your knife is completely buried in there. Uh, this one goes in a little bit nicer. I think it's because of the slickness of the paper micarta and the polished uh, clip but you do have a flipper tab that will be uh, sticking into anything that you put in that pocket with it. All right, now let's open it up. Uh, the, like I said, stainless steel liners. You have two barrel standoffs right there in the back uh, and a completely open construction, so it'd be easy to blow it out with some compressed air, wipe it out with a Q-tip. Let's look at the lock right now. You have button locks on both variations. I will say that the button lock on the coated version does have a little bit of stick not bad it it was a little bit uh more of an audible sound when i first got it I, I think it may have something to do with the black coating because this one without the coating has not had any stick whatsoever now the stick on this one's not enough to where it bothers me in the least um it, it's not hard to push down or anything and like i said it's gotten better over time the lockup on both of them are rock solid no up and down no left to right very very nice now i can flex if i pull hard on these i can flex left to right but it's not wiggling in the pivot any quick size comparisons we have the ontario rat model one which dwarfs it and the ontario rat model two which is much more common in a length we have the hogue ritter rsk and the mini rsk it's right in the middle of those two Last, we have the Kaiser Assassin and the Kaiser Deviant. The Deviant's probably the closest in length. The Assassin's a little bit shorter, not by much. All right, now for my nitpicks and complaints. First up, I think the knife is a little too similar to the Kaiser Assassin. Um, I mean, they added a little bit more hump to the top of the blade and they added the blade hole but i mean even the handle profiles are pretty similar you do get a little bit longer length in here it almost seems like they took uh the this design and uh made it more conducive to what we wanted out of the assassin uh, that's just how it seems you uh, you have the blade hole you have a little bit more length you have the rounded back right there that should make it a little bit more comfortable but look even the positions of the pocket clip I don't know, love to hear y'all thoughts down below. Next, like I said before, you, this, this particular variation has minor lock stick. Uh, nothing to be afraid of. It, it's, it's gotten better over time and it will continue to get better. And lastly, um, the pocket clip being as low as it is here, I even noticed it on the Assassin. It wasn't as bad on the Assassin, but whenever I got into that heavier wood cutting, I did get a hot spot from the top and bottom of that clip. Enough to where I had to kind of stop and see what was causing it. But it's not a deal breaker unless you plan on doing tons of hard, hard cutting with this type of knife. All right, final thoughts. It's a really good knife. Uh, but if you already own the Assassin and a blade hold doesn't really matter to you, then... I'd say, you know, just stay with the Assassin. But if you don't already own the Assassin and you're like me, I like multiple opening methods, then I'm going to go with the Hiccup. Um, but if you like both of them and you don't mind that they're that similar, you, you won't be disappointed. I do wish they would come down on the price a little bit because the uh, Hiccup is $13 more than the Assassin. And this one has a uh, outside designer that they have to pay so I, I understand you're probably paying extra for the thumb stud that they could have left out and you're paying extra for that thumb hole i would have liked to see it at least at that 70 dollars price point i think that would have been nice but i don't think it's super out of line where it's at so overall i like the knife <laughs> you got to decide whether you know you you care about the differences uh, you know the lack of differences in these two or whether you want the multiple opening methods you, you're going to be happy you know if you, whatever one you decide to buy so if you have any questions comments concerns please leave them down below i hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day i will see y'all on the next one peace